If you mention rock crawler, an independent front suspension to anyone who's like into rock crawling, a lot of them will tell you it's no good. Well, I disagree. And this thing sat next to me here. We'll have a quick look over this later on in the video. This has got independent front suspension and it's absolutely awesome. But that's not what this video is about. This is the new Zool trail truck from Element. They've already released the Zool. This one has got the IFS2 and it's scratch and sniff. Well, Scratch and weather. The first truck with IFS2 was the U-Tron, and the body was certainly an acquired taste. Whereas this one is a Land Cruiser style body. And lots of people like Land Cruisers. I don't believe it's any different to the U-Tron. Oh, actually, yeah. So it's got the new Fly Sky um, two-in-one ESC and receiver. Just because it's two-in-one, don't dismiss it. It's actually really good and it's got a lot of control and I prefer it to the old Reedy one. It's got the Stealth X transmission, really good transmission with various overdrive options. It's got the Gatekeeper rear trailing arms with anti-roll bars. It's still got the same 550 Reedy, I think it's a six slot, five slot, five slot, 14 turn brushed motor. Shock mount inserts, so you can change your shock positions and then it's got this IFS2 Camberg front independent suspension. Like I've said, not everyone likes it. I really like it and I think what it does is it gives you it gives you a slightly different experience to normal rock crawling. So most people are more familiar with your usual solid axle and this is definitely the choice for most serious rock crawlers. But independent front suspension, it just gives you, like I said, a slightly different experience. You have to find some slightly different lines and I really enjoy running rigs that have got that IFS. And this one definitely looks cool. Like it shows you, you can take the box apart, reverse it, and you've got yourself a little one-tenth scale garage. Now this one is a baby blue color, like a matte blue. I had an old Ford Fiesta, um, this color. I think it was called ceramic blue. Mine wasn't meant to be a matte color, but I think <laughs> the paintwork was that bad that it was. Whoa. Well, I think you definitely need to get that lower down. Ooh. It was really nice. We'll look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. That's your Fly Sky transmitter that pairs up to the two in one ESC. You've got loads of functions on this. You've got your steering and throttle dual rates. You've got your trim. You can select your running mode. You can select your drag brake. You can select your battery types, all done with these dip switches. Don't think it's used on this, but you've got a channel three and a channel four. Sticker sheet, instructions, and then you get a load of stuff in this bag. This will come with a shorty battery tray, but you get a bigger full-size one as an option. What are they for? I don't know what they're for. Maybe they're for something else. You've got guards that you can put on your spotlights across the top. It does look really good, doesn't it? That looks like a big aerial and then maybe a little aerial. That gives you the option of running your servo and a winch. The body post if you want to put a different body on. You've got a load of rod ends in there. You've got your optional overdrive. I think that might be 11%. It comes with five point something and that's like, 11 point something in there. Overdrive means that your front wheels turn more than your rear wheels. It helps when you're climbing to pull the front end down a little bit. It also helps pull the front round when you're turning. More stuff, more stuff, more stuff, whatever that is. This is a really nice body. It does look good. And if we have a quick peek underneath, you'll see it's painted like an oxide red. That is your scratch and weather body. You can either keep it like this, and then naturally as you're on the rocks and stuff and the body gets scraped, it's gonna start wearing through and uh, looking weathered. Like it shows on the box, although that's definitely not been done naturally. Or you can take some Scotch Bright, or a technique I found works is a blade, and you can accidentally, oops, scratch it yourself and then as you can see that rusty sort of red color comes through really well and you can do as much or as little as you want nice so we've got loads of molded parts on this you've got your front grille with your lights you've got your fender lights or wing lights there as well i think they're indicators on an fj you've got a fake winch there but you can fit a real one you've got your mirrors big row of spotlights i really like that they look good door handles roll bars and uh that's it <laughs> and then let's have a look underneath be nice to see clipless bodies from um element Ah, save me hurting my precious hands. So no lights on this, but there is room for you to put LEDs under there. It's a really nice clean look underneath. That's your Stealth X gearbox. There's three options for overdrive. Comes with like 5.8 uh, and you've got the option of 11 point something. Uh, or you can have it one to one, so no overdrive. You've got your two in one ESC and receiver up front. You've got a lot of spaces on there for optional lights. Fits neatly there next to the steering servo. There's your shorty battery tray, Dean's connector. Five slot, 14 turn, 550 motor. Really nice crawler motors there, and they've had them out a while. 
uh, but they drive really well. You've got some small side steps here. There's your adjustable rear suspension. So you've got a few different places you can put your suspension there. You've got a couple of different options on the trailing arms as well. And then there's your anti-roll bar or your sway bar. General grabber tires on bead locks. Yeah, bead lock wheels, foams in there. Compound's not super soft, but still feels pretty decent. And then underneath, solid rear axle. So your GKS, your gatekeeper suspension. Telescopic drive shafts. And then you've got that IFS2, which is really well set up. And I really like this sort of like tray under here. Certainly helps when you're on the rocks. It kind of like slides over. You can see all the wear on this one, look, where it's been sliding over them rocks. See the steering all tucked up in there. You can actually see much better on this one. So there's your steering mechanism there. It's almost, it's like a, a rack and pinion. This one needs the servo fixing, but you can see there, look, it slides along like that. Get a nice angle on there. And there you go, there's a better view of it. And then you've got your alloy bodied shocks. I think that's different actually to the U-Tron. These might be, I'm sure these are the stock ones that are on the U-Tron, the plastic ones with the spring underneath. I'll have to confirm, but it might be the different suspension on this. They are wound up quite high. I'm gonna adjust all the suspension before we take it out. For me, it just sits a bit, it's a bit high. I want it to sit a little bit lower. I want it to have a little bit more droop. Check it out, how cool does that look? So just gone for some mild weathering. The paint's really thick. It took quite a while to get this stuff off. I mean, with a blade, it's quite easy. But anyway, some slight weathering. Done the same to the stickers as well, just to make it look authentic. I don't know who that is, but um, anyway, it looks really good. I've also slightly adjusted the suspension. I've pulled the rear down a little bit, as low as you can get it really. I've added, we've got a little bit of droop in there. And the same at the front, I actually did adjust it up because it was kind of sat down like that. Um, but again, I've put the suspension as low as it'll go. Personal preference, and for me, it's more of a visual thing. I just like that lower stance and when it's going over the rocks and stuff, I just like it. I just like how it looks. It may not perform as good with a suspension lower like that, I just like it. And that's a good thing about these, you can make it your own. Like I said, I will show you what you can do with these things um, at the end of the video. Anyway, switch on, so steering. Not super quick, pretty much as far as it'll go. Yeah, set as far as it'll go. That's not a bad angle, you know, that is not bad. So in the crawler setting, forward, straight reverse, and bit of resistance there, that is your uh, drag brake. That is all adjustable now, what have we got? Drag brake. So it's set to 75% drag brake. <laughs> that sounds cool. Um, running it 2S, it will run 3S. I'm gonna take a little 3S LiPo with me uh, and we'll give it a go on the rocks. Right then, let's give this thing a go. Look at this controller. That's what I said about this electronics. It's got so much more control with it. Be nice if there were some lights in there, wouldn't there? Obviously you can add your own. Looks good. It's been a lot of rain recently. Not that the weather usually stops me, but it's so much nicer to do it in the dry. lovely control i'm sure as these grabbers get a bit wet and dirty they're going to lose a little bit of their traction but oh get that back wheel up there whoa nearly off the edge i'm going for a new stance on uh, drivers you see we've got no driver in there now previously I'd have gone to the effort of putting a driver in there but I've decided that if a manufacturer is going to put clear windows on and not put an interior in then then I'm not going to make it look good for them. That's on them not on me. Oh. Very good. It's definitely nice to see clear windows rather than stickers but Come on, give us an interior. This thing looks good, but it looks so much nicer if we had a driver in there and a nice interior. Or oh, no traction here on these loose rocks. This looks all quite new here as well. Come on. Running it 2S. We could definitely do with a bit more of the 3S wheel speed on this bit, I reckon. Come on. 
Oh, I can feel a bit of rain coming. Yeah, definitely too slippery for that bit. Although the suspension's low enough now, probably do all right. Oh, probably do all right up there if it had traction. Better tyres would help as well, but it wants to go. Oh, it's going to do it. Yes, that's the first time I've ever done that. That is the first time. I don't know if you can see how steep it is. Well, there you go. That's the first, and it's really muddy. Look at it. Look how slippery it is. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's almost vertical. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's wash those tyres off. That's full throttle on 2S. Like I said, it will run three. I've got a 3S battery. We'll stick it in in a minute, I think. Let's just... A bit of side hill in. Can't imagine it'd be too difficult for this with its nice low C of G now. Slide in a little bit. Those grabbers are actually pretty good. I thought they might struggle on this kind of terrain with the uh, slippery mud. Perfect. That is the perfect way to do that. All right, 75% drag brake. Should be able to get this down nice and controlled. Just let it run. <laughs> so no throttle input here. This is all the drag brake at the moment. Need a bit of throttle now. And then let the drag brake take it. There we go. Right, let's put a 3S in, get a bit more wheel speed in. There's a little bit of mud over there. We're going to have a play. Although I don't want to go too crazy because, uh, yeah, I don't fancy doing too much of a clean up on this one. Doesn't matter what I do, she's got a hold on me. She knows how to drive a truck, but she lets me pick her up when we're going dancing. My heart stops beating when my headlights shining on her. She's my country girl. I couldn't tell you what she's doing with me. She's so damn out of my league. She's a little bit crazy on the weekends, dancing in her red dress, and I love the way she looks in my eyes. And I feel the light of midnight's getting closer, and I just wanna hold her in my arms till the sun comes up. She's a little bit country. Yeah, she's my country. So there we go, the new Zool IFS2 trail truck from Element. And as with, well, all the element stuff I've tested, it just works. No fancy two-speed gearbox or locking diffs or anything like that. It's just a nice trail truck that, well, runs as it should. So like you saw, mine sits a little bit lower, but it didn't really cause it many problems. It, it did get hung up a few times on the rocks, but it was decent, a lot of fun in the mud as well. Uh, and the wheels are completely sealed. What I usually do, if they're bead locks, after I've run through mud or water, I'll take them apart to dry all the foams out and stuff, but, I took one off and well, apart from a little bit of muck round the edge where the bead is, completely dry. So it's another bonus. Uh, the only thing I am gonna say is I'd love to see lights and interior just as standard. The Bushido Plus came out recently that had interior added and some lights. Can't imagine the cost is crazy and I reckon that more would be sold anyway so it'd cover any extra costs. But that is about it. Right then, I'm not going to go into massive detail here. On the second channel, I'm going to do a bit of a showcase video on there, go over it, um, fix the servo, probably show you it running next to that actually, so you can see the difference between completely stock and, well, <laughs> completely modified. So this is owned by a very good friend of mine, Sean, who is a team driver for, well, he's a team driver for a few people, but he is a GCRC team driver or even pro team driver. He's a bit of a big deal. And after reviewing my U-Tron, I gave it to Sean and I gave him a load of cash and I said, go crazy, make something cool. And this is what he's come up with. So I've just realized something. This has got the Stealth XF in it. The U-Tron was an SE, which also explains the plastic shocks. That's like the full fat IFS2. The U-Tron was the SE, which has got a slightly different gearbox and different shocks. And I don't know if there's any other differences. And that, But that will explain why it's got alloy bodied shocks. And that's got the Stealth X gearbox. 
the Stealth XF, slightly different and it's incorporated in the skid. Anyway, this is Sean's rig and it's awesome. It incorporates the IFS2 on it in the front there. It's got these really nice punk custom carbon wheels. Just see through there, some brass from Trill. So you've got brass front steering hubs. You've also got some brass on the stock rear axle. Initially, he was running the trailing arm setup on it. It just wasn't working really with this LCG chassis. As you can see now, there's some high clearance. I think they're D-Links and then some Delrin ones at the top there. BF Goodridge crawler tires and their power foam inserts in there. Holmes Hobby steering servo. Holmes Hobby 35 turn motor and a Holmes Hobby brushed mini ESC there. Got a nice carbon GCRC bed and then all of that is bolted to this GCRC Cayman chassis. This one's raw aluminium so I think that's a C1. Custom front bumper on there and then the body. It looks so cool really well done anyway like i said i'm gonna do a full like showcase on this on the second channel i'll get all the specs off sean we'll get it fixed we'll sort the link out for the steering and then we'll take it for a drive link in the description on more information on this i'll see you next time